TV. Hello, good evening. I'm Shane Seeley. In our top story tonight, the Barbados Agricultural Society is sounding a warning to the local hospitality sector about importing poultry products that can be supplied right here in Barbados. And its Chief Executive Officer James Paul is calling on the government to take the necessary action to stamp out the practice. His comments came during a news conference at the BAS headquarters in response to charges about a shortage of poultry products on the island, particularly eggs. Mr. Paul has dismissed the claim, urging local hoteliers to respect the Memorandum of Understanding signed recently between the Society and the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, which, according to him, also speaks to the issue of importation. It will not serve the interests of this industry in general for government to sit down and think that because of the fact that they have the favorite hospitality industry at this time making any noises for anything, to go along and allow imports very nearly. And that is the point that we are trying to make. We've had some problems with eggs recently. We have had to import a container of eggs to help to solve the situation during the Christmas period. Okay? But we, we recognize that very early and we move to thwart that situation. All right? And we handle um, consumption during peak demand. That is during the Christmas period. The BASEO now wants stakeholders in the hospitality sector to re-enter into dialogue with the BAS. Come and sit down and treat us as the equals that we are to you. Come and sit down and discuss with us what your requirements are, not only for January or for February, but for the year. Because if we are saying that we have an industry that is of modern times, that can do the things that needs to happen, they should be able to sit down and forecast what the purchasing requirements are for the year. In this way, this industry can safely sit down and project what we need to produce during this year. And we can actually create the type of investment in plant that is needed to do so. Meanwhile, the BAS president and head of the Barbados Egg and Poultry Producers Association, Carla Brathwaite, says recent problems concerning the quality of feed on the market are being investigated. He admits it did have an impact on local poultry producers. This year, we had some unusual things happening with our, our, um, our feeds, and we have seen, we have investigated it. We are satisfied within ourselves that we have to deal with the feed company to try and get that, those things resolved, which we are in the process of doing. But it's all, everything has happened almost in a split second. Scores of ancient taxpayers bombarded some Barbados Revenue Authority or BRA locations today in time to pay various taxes before the end of the year. However, the Barbados Revenue Authority is reminding taxpayers that the Finance Minister Chris Sinclair has proposed an amnesty to all taxpayers on interest and penalties accrued between at December 31st, 2014 in relation to land tax, value-added tax, and income taxes. The amnesty has been granted on the condition that any outstanding principal must be paid on or before March 15, 2015. The authority has also advised that these payments may be made in installments for convenience. However, in a statement, the authority further advised the public should, that the public should note that the municipal solid waste tax is not included in the amnesty and that final payment date for the municipal tax without penalty remains December 31st, 2014. Meanwhile, all the authority's locations will be closing from 1 in the afternoon tomorrow. A St. Michael man is expected to appear in the District A Magistrates Court tomorrow on charges of serious bodily harm. He's 58-year-old Jeffrey Brathwaite of Carrington Village in the said parish. Police say Brathwaite is charged in connection with an incident at Fairfield Carrington Village yesterday evening, which resulted in a woman being hospitalized with chop wounds about her body. According to the Police Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch, the woman, whose name is being withheld, was taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital by ambulance. The acting ASB Welch said that the woman underwent surgery and is now in stable condition. Scores of Barbadians, including a number of top officials, have paid their final tributes to the former chairman of the National Housing Corporation, Ashley Leroy Toppin. He was laid to rest yesterday following a packed funeral service at the St. Lucie Parish Church 
also attended by Prime Minister Frando Stewart and other members of cabinet. Paying tribute to Mr. Toppin was the housing minister Dennis Kelman. He credited the late chairman with helping to turn around the financial situation at the NHC. We recognize that in order to empower the masses of people in Barbados and with the financial situation in National Housing Corporation, that we had to find some creative ways to turn around the fortunes of National Housing. And we came up with a commercial law, which we said that what you had to do was to sell some of their prime locations across Barbados, maximize the returns, and use that to subsidize the land and the units for the masses of people in Barbados. That was Ashley Toppin and the board at the time. And the NHC general manager, Lynette Napoleon Young, described Mr. Toppin as a dedicated leader who headed a number of government agencies and organizations with stellar service. He brought with him a wide and varied experience in leadership roles in various organizations in this country. He was chairman at one point of the Barbados Industrial Development Corporation. And at the time of his passing, he was executive chairman of the um, Barbados Lumber Company and chairman of the St. Lucie, Lucie Constituency Council. In addition, he was the director of the Central Bank of Barbados and long-standing secretary treasurer of North Star's Cultural and Social Club. We'll have more news after the break, but first we want to get your take on the question. Should the MOU between the agricultural sector and hoteliers be legislated? Text yes or no to short code 8111. The result at the end of the news. Make their wishes come true at Courts this Christmas. Gifts for dad you know he'll love. Something special just for mom. And gifts for your brother and sister too. Everyone's a winner with over $1 million in prizes, cash, and free gifts. Shop with us and your Christmas wish can come true. Win a brand new car or $50,000 in cash in the Christmas Wishing Well promotion. Get a chance to win free groceries for one year with a purchase of any large appliance and $30,000 in energy-saving products if you buy a smart energy Item. Plus, you can win $20,000 in fashionable furniture and paints. And what's more, get an instant free gift with any purchase, $999 and over. So complete your gift list this Christmas, only at Courts, bringing value home. With high quality service and its invaluable contribution to trade, industry and commerce, it brings international recognition to Barbados and continues to be the best in class. 90% of the people in Barbados said, do you think you can build a wall out there in the sea? As fast as you build it, the sea is going to knock it down. Well, it's been there now 50 years and as far as I know, it's still standing there and the, the, the port now became a center of industrial activity in, in Barbados. This is the story of Barbados' seaporto, the port of Bridgetown, and it's coming soon to CBC TV8. Some of the National Petroleum Corporation's customers are drawing down natural gas over and above the maximum limit that they are allowed. This is one of the key factors the corporation says may have contributed to the recent major gas outage that affected several West Coast restaurants and hotels during the busy Christmas period. The revelation came during a meeting involving officials from the NPC, the Barbados Hotel and Tourism Association, and the Barbados Tourism Marketing Incorporated, along with the industry minister, Donville Innes. At the end, the NPC said the immediate solution is for customers, especially those on the West Coast, to stagger their use as much as possible during the day. Restaurants have also been urged to prepare as much as possible during the day. The NPC has also asked the customers which have exceeded their limit to cut back on the busy New Year period. Patients are being asked to take personal responsibility for their illnesses in order to ease the burden on the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. 
The message came from the chief executive officer, Dr. Dexter James, during a presentation of a check for $5,000 from Marver Latimore to the Asthma Bay. Dr. James believes that when patients take personal responsibility, it will cut the overall costs of the hospital. Here's a situation where even if you provide a patient with the equipment to manage themselves at home, because of the, the capacity of the system, they prefer not to manage themselves at home, but come to the Queen's Elizabeth Hospital. Now, when they are presented the accident in the emergency department, it consumes resources that hitherto could have been uh, applied to persons who have life-threatening circumstances. So this issue of personal responsibility has to become a very important part of how we're going to reorient our services. Ms. Latimore, a Barbadian who resides in the U.S., was pleased to give the donation. She says she decided to present the money to the Asthma Bay because of her grandson. As a, city, as a citizen of Barbados, I'm always concerned of what's going on in Barbados. I have a grandson who is asthmatic, and his name is Duran Latimore, and I have decided to give a donation on his behalf to assist in any way that it can to help with the asthmatic, what is it, asthma bay, asthma bay. of the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. An American of Barbadian parentage has been at the forefront of the protests against the targeting of black people in her country. Vanessa Lynch was a member of the QT19, the first 19 people taken into custody by police during the Ferguson protests in October. The demonstrations were sparked by the shooting death of a young black man, Michael Brown, by a white police officer. Ms. Lynch was arrested a total of five times during the marches for chanting Black Lives Matter. She says in spite of that, she feels compelled to continue because of the constant injustices and racism occurring in the U.S. She confessed to being fearful of losing her life in the struggle in light of the recent killing of black people in the U.S. However, she says she would much rather protest than do nothing. I think that maybe it was Audre Lorde who said, um, or uh, maybe it was Audre Lorde who said, uh, when I do not speak, I am afraid. When I speak, I am afraid, so it is better to speak. Um, there is obviously fear because we know that the police officers can legally kill us and get away with it, um, and they're doing it every day. But for me, um, what other option do I have? Um, I have two younger brothers. I have a father. They're, they're black. They're people of color. Um, I would rather march every day than have to wonder if one of us is going to get shot every day. Ms. Lynch, who is spending the holidays here with her family, believes that there is a lesson for Barbadians to learn from the recent protests. When we fight, we win. <laughs> um, we have to stand together. And this is about love um, for our families, love for our black communities, love for ourselves that propels us to move forward. So I would say to just stick together and work together. I think that um, Barbadians know this well. Um, Barbados fighting for its independence and gaining its independence from England. Um, Barbadians know that, so we just have to remember that. When we fight, we win, and we have to stick together. And when we have unity, you know, anything is possible. Regional news next, but first a reminder that we want to hear from you on the question, should the MOU between the agricultural sector and hoteliers be legislated? Text yes or no to short code 8111. The result? at the end of the news and you can also follow us on Twitter at CBC underscore Barbados and on our Facebook page CBC News Barbados. The most wonderful time of the year at Brankers on Fontabelle and Brankers wants to give you the best prices for Christmas. A brand new shipment of 8x8 decorative glass blocks at the amazing low price of $6.50 each. 16x16 16 16 ceramic floor tiles $2.79 each. 17x17 17 17 ceramic floor tiles $3.49 each. 18x18 18 ceramic floor tiles $3.69 each. And 24x24 24 24 porcelain floor tiles from $15.99 each. Make your home the envy of your friends this Christmas. Hurry down to Brankers on Fontabelle, where affordable luxury lives. Brankers wishes its many friends and customers a very blessed Christmas.